What's going on, Internet? Jax here, and today I have a really exciting car for you guys. It's one of the hottest new SUVs on the market. It's the 2020 Kia Telluride. And to say that Mrs. Jax and I have been enjoying this car this week is putting it mildly. Take a look. Now before we get too far into this review and before I bore you with all of the facts and figures about this car and what I think of it as an automotive enthusiast, I think it's important to kind of hear from what Mrs. Jax thinks of the car because this is a family car. This is the kind of car that your wife will likely be driving around with your children in tow or you will be driving with your wife and children in tow as a family going to various school functions, sporting events, and whatnot. And so I threw Mrs. Jackson to the driver's seat, not literally, figuratively, because I'm a charming and respectful husband. And I asked for her opinions about the car straight up with very little background on the driving experience of the user interface. And this is what she thought of the car from a completely sort of blank canvas perspective, her first impressions of the Kia Telluride. So driving the uh, Kia Telluride, and it is hands down my favorite of the cars that that I've driven, which is shocking. I did not think that I would say that. Um, I just never thought of, it's just not a car I would have thought that I would have loved. And I absolutely love it. Like I'm dreading it leaving. It just drives so nice. It feels like it's meant for me. It's got just the right amount of luxury. Everything feels nice. Everything looks nice. And it's very user friendly. I can, uh, I can use all this really easily. Um, when I'm driving, I used the cruise control yesterday for the first time, which was might be one of my favorite features. I was driving on 400, so there's cars everywhere, and it shows you in the heads-up display who's in front of you, who's next to you, how fast you're going, how fast the speed is set for. Just super, super, super user-friendly. And I mean, it, can, it had to come to a complete stop at one point, and it does it all for you. You don't have to touch anything. I mean, you barely, I mean, you need your hands on the wheel, but it turns the wheel for you. Um, I was just super impressed. One thing I love is that I, I just put my blinker on, and there's a video right here of what's happening um, to the side of my car so you can see the curb to make sure I don't hit the curb which I, I've never seen that in a car so that was really cool I love the camera here um, that shows me when I'm backing up it shows me the backup camera it also has the overhead camera so I can see what's happening above me which is really cool you can see when you're pulling into a parking spot I like turning that on I can see how close I am I'm always I always feel like I'm not sure if I've pulled up enough or I have to get out of the car and see if I park good on both sides or whatever and you don't have to do that in this car you can also there's a little button right here so you can press the camera to view so like right there and you can press the camera to view anytime you want to see it the I like the charging there's like a little a pad a charging pad whatever like a wireless thing you can just set your phone there and it charges it's got uh, USB and charging cords up here so two different places I really like the Apple CarPlay it works great um, I was using it the other day listening to my music and listening to or watching the uh, navigation so I love that the sunroofs are awesome I love the rear sunroof oh the talk now if you press this button that says talk now you can talk to the people in the rear I don't know if you can hear it but it like echoes back there and they can hear you so for those of you who are mothers or, or dads or whoever's driving and you have kids in the way back and you're like be quiet you know stop fighting don't touch your brother or whatever they can hear you and you don't have to yell and then you just turn it off and um, so that was pretty cool my, th my kids thought that was neat also when you get out so when the kids are with me I mean I don't really need this because I've got older kids but if I had younger kids this would be a really good uh, feature you can when you get out of the car it, it shows a little thing it says rear it says uh, alarm check rear seats so if there's anybody you know it would remind you for those terrible stories you hear but you wouldn't forget if you had, if you had a kid back there so I think that's really neat the cooled seats are very nice I have it on right now because it's you know a 98,000 degree day in here in Georgia like usual um, the cold seats work really well I obviously haven't used the heated seats but I'm sure they work well the steering wheel is a heated steering wheel which I also really love the steering wheel it's very smooth and like a good 
a good size for a steering wheel. I like the way it, I like the way it feels. So I just turned my blinker on, so I'm seeing my camera right here to make sure I'm not too close to the curb. And when I was getting over, it reminded me, you can also, uh, like it's got the heads up display up here, which shows your speed, it shows the speed limit. By, by the way, it shows the speed limit up there. I can see the speed limit right here and the speed limit is right here. So three different places that it tells me what the speed limit is. So, you know, the times when you're driving on a road and it hasn't showed you the speed limit in forever, that's not really an issue. But it shows me where the people are when they're my blind spots. It lights up over here on the side. So I like that. That's something I would especially use. I used it all the time when I was driving on the highway yesterday. And then in the heads up, when you do the cruise control, the heads up display also shows you when people are in your blind spot. So there's just so many really neat features that make me feel like I'm very safe when I'm driving this car. Um, I feel like I know what's going on around me I and I can I can use it. I've been in cars where I'm like, I know it's got all these features, but I, don't, I can't figure any of this out. I can't figure out this, the cruise control, I can't figure it, whatever. And this car is not like that. Um, it just all feels very user-friendly, very intuitive. There's also a really great place back there to put my purse, which I know is a strange thing, but when someone's in the seat over here, it's normally where I put my purse. I need a good place to put it. And there's like a little crevice back there between the kids' seats. So I guess my one complaint right now is that it's hard to see the heads-up display when I have my sunglasses on, but because it's sunny out here, but when I take the sunglasses off, it's really bright. So that's just, you know, my polarized sunglasses, I suppose. So that's not really a, a car issue. But I mean, other than that, it's just really, really nice. The seats feel great. Everything feels great. I can't, I honestly have zero complaints and people look at it. They're like, whoa, I went to a, uh, a little kid birthday party the other day and there was, it was, you know, parents. So there was dads there and I pulled up and I was by myself. And when I got out, there was like five different husbands that were like, who's that car? What is that? Is that, they thought it was a, you know, you know, they were like, what is that? And they all look, we're looking inside and I'm thinking, wow, what, who would have thought that five grown men would have, you know, be looking all inside the, this Kia Telluride because they were so impressed with just by the looks of it. Um, on the outside is what drew them in. So I was super, I was super impressed by that. So it's kind of fun having a car that everybody thinks looks really great. He's had sportier cars that while they were fun to drive, didn't feel like it was meant for me. So it's just the right amount of luxury, the right amount of, um, of beauty. I, I mean, I think it's a beautiful car, the wood accents and stuff. And it, it feels like the perfect size for me and the kids. And I, I really, really, really love this car and will miss it greatly when, when it goes away. Um, so we were just in a crowded parking lot, so like a little shopping area. And um, one thing that I hadn't noticed before, so I guess I hadn't backed out of a parking space before, but um, when you back out, it has the rear sensing, whatever. So the, the wheel, sh it shows you on the, on the rear camera, like an error, like a, I don't know, like an orange cone kind of thing, like a little error. And it also shakes the wheel. So it kind of vibrates a little bit um, to get your attention that someone's coming. So it was really nice because in like that parking lot, it's hard to, it's hard to know if people are coming. You kind of, one of those things where you kind of inch out and hope no one's there in, in a road where you don't have great visuals. So that's, I thought that was a very, um, a nice touch that, that would, I would use, uh, I would use often. I know a lot of cars don't have a middle seat, but I really like that because then they have the armrests that you can put down and stuff which I find very nice. Also, this isn't normal, I don't think, but these two seats back here, you can heat, do heated seat and cooled seat, which is so cool. And there's so many outlets back here and so many different ways to charge things. So there's a USB here, and then down there, there's one that like, it's, I don't know what kind of plug it is, but there's one like that. And then there's a whole outlet one back there, which I find very cool. And then there's cup holders right here, which is very nice. And yeah, I like it a lot. I like the cooled and heated seats because normally only mommy and daddy get those, but now I can have them too. And I don't like the, the rear seat thing where they talk to you because then I have to listen. <laughs> and I can't tell them that I didn't hear them. So, and I also, and they also like the sunshade because then it blocks the sun. And the seat's comfortable because I fell asleep the other day in here and I had the arm, and I should have had the armrest out, but I forgot. And there's also a little hook on the back of the seat so that like when you're coming back from school, you can hang your backpack there or something. Like if you're on a road trip, you can hang up your bag that you're using. I really like how there's a sunroof in the back. So, you know, it's like I'm sitting back here. I get some sun, not too hot, but I get some sun. And I also like the roof is really soft. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's just really soft. 
Now before we get into the facts and the figures and we start talking about the details of the Kia Telluride, we have to address the elephant in the room. And by elephant in the room, I mean the fact that this car looks freaking amazing. The Kia Telluride is a successful design on pretty much every front. The front end of the Telluride is unique yet distinctly. Kia, I think the sort of tiger nose, I believe tiger nose grill that Kia calls it, whatever it's called, this is one of the best examples yet. Kia's design language looks fantastic on this car. The rear end looks modern and unique with the sort of hockey puck tail lights that are LEDs. My only complaint there would be that the reverse lights are these like lame white incandescents. But other than that, the rest of the car looks phenomenal. This is an extremely stylish SUV. You'll see inside as well as outside. And I just think it's an absolute home run for Kia in a segment that is dominated by shapeless potato jelly beans or potato flavored jelly beans. That sounds horrible, by the way. Potato flavored jelly bean? That's like one of those jelly belly flavors that's like vomit or something out of like Harry Potter. Bogies! George Swed, he got a bogey flavored one once. And this distinctiveness really helps the Telluride distance itself from a crowded field. Honestly, this car looks way more expensive than it is. And I was asked by numerous people, what is that? Is that a Kia? Oh my gosh, that's incredible looking. And it really begs the question, why would you spend 10 to 20,000 more on a luxury branded SUV that is arguably not any better, if not as good, and is probably smaller than the Kia Telluride. It's a fantastic value and a very unique look that Kia has created here. And between you and me, and not between you and me because this is on the internet and that's a stupid thing to say, but between you and me, it looks a lot better than the Hyundai Palisade. I'm not a huge fan of the Hyundai Palisade. It has many of the Kia's features and it is also itself a very strong value proposition. But come on, it, that looks 10 times better. So. What do you get for your money? Well, quite a lot. So with the Kia Telluride on the outside, aside from the gorgeous sheet metal, you get a 291 horsepower V6 engine and eight speed automatic transmission that can tow up to 5,000 pounds as equipped. Now, a couple of things about the power. First of all, it is more than adequate. 291 horsepower geared the way it is, is plenty to get this rig up and moving. And never once did we want for more power. Now it might not be as outright fast as something like the Honda Passport, which is a bit smaller and his engine is sort of better geared, better suited to acceleration. But the Kia Telluride is plenty quick and it will satisfy your need for acceleration. I was never left wanting for power, but Kia, come on. The Stingers, twin turbo V6 or your V8, come on. In a Telluride, like, Ultra line or whatever you want to call the Kia, like step up, you know, what does Hyundai have in? Come on, we need Kia K or R or murder, death, killer wagon, something like that. Come on, you've got power. I know you got more power in there. A little more power would be awesome. The eight speed automatic does the job very well. Only a couple times that I wanted to downshift and it wouldn't give me the downshift, but a lot of automatics are like that. It's in the name of fuel economy or whatever. It wasn't a big deal. Just a little prod of the accelerator pedal got the Kia Telluride up and moving in no time. Another thing about the automatic transmission is it is almost imperceptibly subtle. It is super smooth in its operation. And it's really a welcome kind of cruising companion. It just slides through the gears like warm butter on top of molasses coated with caramel or something else that is smooth. And that, that doesn't make sense, that's sticky. Something smooth. It's like warm butter drizzled over Barry Manilow. None of you have any idea who that is. I barely have any idea who that is. Let's think of something else smooth. It's like Logan Paul, no, wait, that's no. No, that's not a good idea. That's no, cut that. It's like something else smooth. It's like a shaven chinchilla. Inside, the Telluride has a 10.2 inch widescreen display that is pretty fantastic. It has Apple CarPlay, it has Android Auto, it has all of the techno and safety features that you would expect in a vehicle that costs basically $48,000. But to be honest with you, what you get for your money is far more than that. You get loads of useful technology and safety. Through the Kia Uvo app, you can auto start stop the car with your phone, you can set the climate control, and it will also, if you have a young child, send you an alert if it detects an occupant in the rear seat. 
that's huge. That's amazing. And, and we praise Tesla for having you know, access to the car with their phone. And then Kia has this app that allows you to basically control the major functions of the car as you approach the vehicle. And it will even give you safety warnings in the event that it thinks someone is still in the vehicle. It even has a find my Kia function so that you can locate your Kia if you had to park it somewhere or move it, or if it gets stolen, or if you just have trouble with parking lots. You know, if you're the kind of person that walks out of Aldi and you're like, where did I park? put my gigantic three row Kia, I can't see it in the Aldi parking lot. I'm just kidding. Why would you be shopping at Aldi if you drive this car? You should be shopping at Whole Foods, clearly, and parking among the Range Rovers and being like, I don't have to put my bill on the credit card. One of my absolute favorite functions in this car is the heated and cooled seats. And one of my children's favorite functions of this car is that the captain's chairs are both heated and cooled, which is awesome. Because how many times have I cranked up a hot car and they're like, send the air back here, we're melting. And I'm like, why are you complaining? You're lucky I feed you. I'm just kidding, I would never say that. But they love the heated and cooled captain's chairs. It makes for a very accommodating ride, especially on longer trips. It also has a pretty substantial Harman Kardon audio system. I am not an audiophile or someone knowledgeable in the ways of music, but I will tell you that this system sounds really good. And when you turn it up, it sounds louder good. With the prestige package, which this car has, in addition to the heated and cooled captain's chairs, you also get this absolutely epic fake suede sort of microfiber headliner. That feels wonderful and it makes you feel like this is a much richer car than it is. It is a really nice touch. You also get a pretty killer head-up display and when you're doing the adaptive cruise control and all that, the amount of information in the head-up display is fantastic. You can see like the distance that you've set with the car in front of you. You get alerts when cars move into your blind spot. It felt like what you imagine driving a Tesla to be because I've never driven one so I imagine it's what driving a Tesla would be. My only complaint is that the lane keep assist function does not work quite as smoothly as Honda's Honda Sensing function and there's a little bit more of a ping pong if you don't kind of control the wheel. Very slight though and you would probably be highly impressed with this system and the wealth of information it provides. It also has rain sensing wipers. I hate rain sensing wipers. Turn those off. This car also has a number of safety features to keep you and your family safe and sound such as blind spot monitoring. It has safe exit assist, which means that it will override the child locks if it senses another car approaching to prevent the door from opening. So say you parallel park on the street, your kid goes to open the door, car is coming, it will prevent the door from opening to make sure they don't open their door into the path of an oncoming car. That is super cool and super safe. Also, side note, this is me, six foot six, sitting behind me six foot six. Score for the Kia. I also mentioned the rear occupant alert, which will alert you if it thinks someone is left in the car. It will display in the dash and on your phone if you have the Kia Uvo Connect. There's also the usual rear cross traffic alert as well as forward braking in case the car in front of you slams on its brakes. And one of the coolest features about this car, which is usually only on high end luxury cars, is it gives you a very good surround view camera. It covers all aspects of the car, front and rear, and the image displayed on the screen is very accurate. I had a Toyota Camry a few weeks ago that had the feature and it was good, but in this Kia, it's even better. And the image is extremely clear, crystal clear. Then on top of that, it also projects via camera a video feed of what is happening on either side of the car when you engage the turn signal. So if you engage the turn signal on this side of the car, it will show you a video feed of what is on that side of the car. That is one of the greatest, most useful safety inventions of the past 20 years, and it really should spread to all cars. It is unbelievably useful, and once you live with it, it's very hard to see how you would live without it. It's extremely, extremely well done. Also, forward collision, rear occupant alert, and safety exit, all standard. In case you're into value, I am into value. You should be into value. So what about cargo space? Well, the Telluride, as you can see, is a fairly large SUV, but like many three row crossovers, space behind the third row is somewhat limited. 
Now, it's more than enough to do the school run and to fit your bags, your camera bags, your cheerleading bag, your workout bag, your extra backpack. I don't even know what half this stuff is. What are my kids doing? What are, like, all these are theirs except for my camera bag. Anyway, it's more than big enough to carry the school run. However, quickly dropping the third row yields an impressive amount of cargo room. And with the captain's chairs folded down, there is an enormous interior full of an amount of cubic feet of space. I don't have the number in front of me, but it's a lot. Go to the Kia website, I'm sure it's on there. If not, you know what, I'll display it on the screen right here and be like, Jax is dumb and ill-prepared. I might not type that, but that's where the cargo space will be. Right there, right there, cargo space. Maybe I'll add a sound effect, like, like Peter McKinnon, like whatever, sound effect, boom, cargo space, boom, cargo space, boom, cargo space, boom, cargo space. If I keep repeating it, the number will just keep flashing and then YouTube will demonetize the video because it's like abusive to viewers. I, I don't know, I don't know. Also, the hatch opens and closes in a reasonable amount of time. You ever seen those cars with an electronic lift gate where it's like, So what's the verdict on the Kia Telluride? Do I have any gripes about the Telluride? Very few. I think the steering's not quite as accurate as some more athletic offerings from, say, Honda, but it's quite good and will be satisfying to most people. I don't think that the difference between the different drive modes on the Telluride, where it has sort of a comfort, a sport, and a smart setting, I don't think the difference is super noticeable. Most people will leave it in the comfort mode, which will make them perfectly happy. I think in sport mode, the steering gets sort of artificially heavy and the throttle's a little jumpy. Um, I also think the brake pedal is a little jumpy, but that's not a super big complaint, to be honest with you, because you get used to it after like a day, and it didn't even bother me after that. And I sort of appreciated the fact that the brakes felt extremely powerful so I wouldn't even chalk that up as a complaint I would say the steering would be my number one complaint my only other complaint would be that the interior looks very nice Napa leather seats extremely sort of sumptuous and luxurious looking interior however there is a touch of hard plastic sort of in the mid to lower part of the doors and dash I will say this though give Kia credit they disguise it extremely well, and I think most people would never even look twice, and they would assume, as Mrs. Jax did, that this car has a fantastically luxurious interior that goes way beyond its $48,000 price. In fact, I would say that's what characterizes the Kia Telluride as a whole. You are getting a ton of car for the money here. The safety, the technology, the looks, I mean, the looks, come on. You are getting all of this for $48,000, which sounds like a lot, but when you consider that, when we bought our 2012 Suburban, we bought it used and we traded in our old Chevy Trailblazer. And the out the door price of the Suburban, after I argued and argued and argued and argued and argued and heckled and argued and threatened and argued, kicked over chairs, threw a trash can, beat a guy up, the out the door price was somewhere in the neighborhood of about Thirty-seven to thirty-eight thousand dollars, and then we did our trade-in. So we came in right about twenty-nine nine 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 nine. Mainly because I told the guy I want to see a number that starts with a two. I don't know. I was having a bad day. Whatever. But my point is that for ten thousand more than what our out-the-door price was for a suburban that feels incredibly dated after driving this car, you would have gotten a brand new car that is far more luxurious, far more well-appointed, and rides and handles a million times better than our truckish Suburban. Now, Mrs. Jax loves her Suburban, but her opinion might be the most valid of all. And her opinion is, please don't take this car away, Kia. No, seriously, by the time you see this video, we're probably in Mexico with the Telluride. I'm sorry, Kia, I apologize. Send no one ever to pick up the car. Mrs. Jax is on a road trip from which she will never return. In any case, I think that's testament to the goodness of the Telluride. She's willing to toss her beloved Suburban aside to pick one of these up. And now, I have to somehow talk her out of it so I don't have a car payment. If you like this video and you found this information useful, please consider hitting subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be part of this community. I love doing these kind of reviews and incorporating my family in them. And if you have any questions that we could answer, me or Mrs. Jax or the girls for that matter, please don't hesitate to post them in the comments below and I will respond as quickly as possible. Also, if you'd like to see sort of more constant updates on what we're doing, 
follow along on Instagram, Jax1079, and you kind of see a more up-to-date, real-time version of what I'm doing, reviewing cars, going to shows, checking out motorcycles, all that good stuff. But until next time, ride safe, drive safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. I, I, I don't even know why you're watching. Seriously, everybody just unsubscribed. Locked. Oh crap, the keys. Why are you even watching at this point, honestly? Like, go to bed. It's probably 3 a.m. and you live in Denver. Go to bed. You have school in the morning.